Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God, our international church online. We are so thrilled with what God is doing in lives. You know, we've, we've done several outreaches over a period of time, and one of those things we're doing right now is this shoebox uh, outreach that we've been working on so hard. And I believe that God will bless so many different people. Last year, I think it was, that we had uh, somebody come in that was sharing in a few of the services, and, and they'd come in to be a caretaker for somebody from, from out of the country. They came in, and they were trying to earn some extra money that way, and they worked as a caretaker. And as they worked as a, uh, somebody who cared for the people, we began to pull the shoeboxes out one day, and we pulled these shoeboxes out that are, are literally given around the world. And they looked out, and their eyes just began to glow. They began to see that all of a sudden, they recognized those shoe boxes as those given to her, to her grandkids and her kids and shared in many families. They used to bring them out in church and share them out in church there. And uh, we watched as those miracles took place. She just was thrilled, tears coming down her cheeks. And she knew that this was a reality. This was a real thing. This was done by little churches like us or big churches or in between churches or whatever it is. God just used people to touch other people around the world. Today, we're, we're going to be giving our tithes and our offerings unto God, our first fruits unto Him. And as we give our first fruits unto God today, I ask that God will bless your first fruits as you give unto Him and do the work inside of your life that needs to be done. And I pray also today that God will use you in a tremendous way, maybe to reach your neighbor or somebody else around you and touch somebody else's life. God bless you today. Lord, we thank you for each person that's watching right now. And God, we ask that you will just minister to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will strengthen them, you will guide them and lead them and help them today. Lord, there's somebody that's really struggling with some heavy stuff going on in their life, and they don't even know which way to turn. But Lord, you knew that they'd be tuning in right now. And Lord, I ask that you just stretch forth your hand and touch them in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. Touch them in a mighty way, and I thank you for it now, Jesus. And we give you praise and glory for that miracle that has happened in their life right now. Amen. Amen. My friend, Join us now as we worship the King of Kings. I say that oftentimes, the Lord of Lords, because He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the way maker. He's the one that, that reaches out beyond what you could ask or think. He's our God. That's who He is. And He wants to touch your life today. Join us now. How many of you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength this morning? Amen? This is the day of me, so I'll rejoice and be glad, rejoice and be glad in it. This is where I believe, that you are more than enough, more than enough for me. You are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am. When I'm standing in your presence, I have everything I need. Oh, do you sing it? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. Let's take it from the top. This is the day. This is the day you have made. So I'll rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad in it. This is the
Praise the Lord. We celebrate with you. But let me tell you something. There's something so eternal that's in you that goes beyond that. There's something where you can experience joy even in the midst of the worst hell you're going through. Let me tell you something. The joy of the Lord will sustain you. That's why he's your strength. Amen. So I don't care what you're going through. And I know I'm not trying to belittle your situation, but we serve a God that's greater. Amen. Amen. So let it rise up. Like a river overflowing, Holy Spirit, let it pour out with no limit, overflowing, Holy Spirit. Spirit. 
just showing it on the outside. We may not be talking about it. But Lord, each one here has a need today. And we just said that you are our very present help in our time of need. So Lord, that means you're here right now to do what needs to be done in our time of need. So we pour out ourselves to you. We raise a hand to acknowledge that we have a need, Lord God. And whatever that need is, you are our present help. You are here right now to meet the need, Lord God. You have the answer. We know you have the answer. We know that you are our provider. We know that you also are our portion. You are our deliverer. Lord, in the time of need, you not only help, but you are our deliverer. So Lord, right now, whatever the need is, I pray that you would bring a deliverance from the need. That you would also, Lord God, give wisdom if wisdom is needed to meet that need. Lord, if there's a decision that has to be made, God, give them godly wisdom to know the right, to do the right thing and make the right decision, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that if healing is the need, that you would bring healing right now. In Jesus' name, pour forth healing virtue, Lord God, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's, uh, whether it's from the past, Lord God, things that just need to be healed. Go to the very depths and fiber of our beings and bring healing now, Lord. Restore what the enemy has stolen. Restore what the enemy has tried, where he's trying to come in and breathe death. Lord, you breathe the breath of life once again. Lord, I thank you that there is victory. Victory in you. And we can stand on your word that says you are a yes and amen, God. And what you've said, you will do. What you've promised, you will do, Lord God. And we stand on that today. And we thank you. And Lord, that is why we bless you. Because we want to bless you at all times, Lord God. We want to praise and worship you and magnify you. Because you alone are our advocate. You are our avenger. Who do we have in heaven beside you, Lord God? No one, there's no one here on earth that's going to avenge. There's no one here on earth that's going to do and be our advocate in the right way. There's no one here on earth that is as powerful as the Almighty God. You are powerful. You are the one that heals. You are the one that delivers. You set free. You bring. You break the curse, Lord. And we thank you that we don't have anyone in heaven but you. But having you, Lord God, is more than enough. Hallelujah. You are our victor. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor for victory in all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Strong 
For joining us here today at Wyckoff Assembly of God, I'm Thomas. I'm Tommy Job, one of the associate pastors here. Blessed to be with you and blessed to share the Word of God with you today. Let's go, to the Lord, in prayer, and we're going to pray for God to bless the preaching of His Word today. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the privilege of being able to read and understand and to be able to preach the Word of God, because Lord, Your Word is life. So, Lord. Help us to partake of that life that you have for us today. Bless each and every listener out there. Touch them. Watch over them and keep them safe and keep them anointed and keep them in the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today's title is called Engage in Business. I'm going to repeat that again, Engage in Business. And you know what? We're used to the spiritual quality and aspects of God. For example, His holiness his power, his majesty. And those are really, truthfully, the great aspects of God. And, and his whole, he's always going to be holy. He's going to be all-powerful. He's going to be omnipresent everywhere he is. But let me also tell you something. God is also very practical. Sometimes we don't associate the spiritual with the practical. But let me tell you something. The two go hand in hand. Think about it. God created man in his image. The fact that you and I are living and breathing is an example of the practicality of God. And we also need to be aware that God is also a businessman. Did you ever think of that? Yeah, God is a business. God is a businessman. Or as some of you in Mississippi may, might say, a businessman. He's a businessman. But now, all joking and frivolity aside, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 19, and I'm going to read verses 11 through 27. Now, I want you to follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from the ESV, and it goes like this. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem, because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return, calling ten of his servants. He gave them ten minas, and he said to him, engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. And the first came to him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you have, you have been faithful in very little. You shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to them, And you are to be over five cities, and another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you put my money in the bank, and at my coming might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you, to everyone who has, who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he, what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. Boy, that sounds pretty drastic, doesn't it? But let me tell you something. 
even as God's heart is tender toward the broken. And, and I believe that God's desire is to heal and to restore, but there is a side of God that deals with the business side of life as well. I mean, we understand the truth of the rapture, and let me tell you something, he is coming back. Of course, we believe in the eminent return of Christ at any time. But what does it say in verse 13 of that chapter? It says, he gave, he gave them ten minis. He gave, a guy, he gave one man ten minas. The mina at that time was the equivalent to a month's salary. So ten, mina, ten minas was the equivalent, oh, let's say to about ten months' salary. So as Jesus ascended to heave, so as Jesus ascended to prepare a place for us, he made an investment of talent and resources in each of us. Yes, you have talents. You have kingdom talents that God wants you to develop. And let me tell you, I'm going to share 2 Peter 1.3. God has provided everything that you need for life and godliness. So for the practical side of your life, God has already provided what you need. To be godly, he has provided exactly what you need to be godly. So you can, you, can be, you can be victorious in your practical and in your spiritual. And let me tell you something. You're not going to be, a lot of times, you're not going to be victorious in your practical if you don't have the spiritual down. In Deuteronomy 8.18, he said he has given the power to create wealth if we're willing to be faithful to him. Yes, you have the power that God has invested in you to be a blessing and to be blessed. What does he say in verse 13 of Luke chapter 19? He said, engage in business till I come. The Greek word for business is pragmatuomai, which means to be pragmatic. So think about it. God commands us in that portion of scripture to be practical. You know, Here's the, here's the balance that we, the struggle that we often run into. You can be so heavenly minded where you're no earthly good. And I also understand that you can be so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good. But today we're going to talk about the practical side. And according to HELPS Word Studies, which is a resource that I often use, what does pragmato, pragmatumai mean? Trade to make gain. Or from a spiritual perspective, go and bear some fruit. You can't just have seed. You got to have fruit. So the question becomes, as, as time progresses, am I going to bear the fruit that God has called me to bear? Trust me, there is coming a time when the rapture comes and it's all over and, and we're going to stand before the presence of God. But inevitably, God is still going to call us to account for the giftings and the talents that he has invested in us, for the financial resources that he has invested in you. God has blessed many of you financially. Why? Not just to be rich. Of course, I want you to enjoy your wealth. You need to enjoy your money. But let me tell you something. God has made you to be a steward, to be a blessing to others, and to be a blessing and to further his kingdom. So my question to you, Jesus told you to engage in business. What is the place of your anointing? What are you set apart to do? What has God called you to do? What is the place of God's business for you? What is your pragmatomai? While we as a church wait for the rapture, let me tell you something. He's coming for a church that is doing the will of the Father. So what is the will of the Father for your life? You're always going to be the most effective in the place of your calling. You know, some places I'm just not going to be fruitful at. Why? Because it's not the place of my calling. Because where you are called to be, if you're in the center of God's will and you're in the place that he's called you to be, your anointing will flow freely. If not, you're going to struggle. You're going to grind all the time. And that's not to say that every struggle is not of God. Of course, while we're on the face of this earth, we will struggle. But there is a place that God has specifically called you to go. And even if there is struggling, there is going to be fruit later on. 
But I want you to struggle in the right field. Not in a field that's not going to bear you much fruit. Thus, are you in the right place at this particular time to be the most productive for the kingdom of God? So do you know where you need to be at this particular place in your life? These are questions that we need to battle, we need to wrestle with. When Joseph and Mary lost Jesus, where did they find, find him? They found him in his father's house. He knew where God, where the father needed him to be, and that's where he was found. He knew his calling and he carried it out. So let me ask you, what is the father's business for you? Jesus went about doing the father's business. So my question is, what is the father's business for you today? Another logical question to ask is, how do we know what God has called us to do? Jesus said that he does what he sees the Father doing. Do you have a clear vision of what the Father is doing? That's something we need to consider. To know the Father's business for your life requires a divine revelation of who he is. And keep this in mind. The scriptures implies that the Father is always up to something. He's always doing something. Are you communicating with the Father to truly know what he's doing and to truly know his heart for you today? Again, are you engaging in the Father's business? Another question, do you have a revelation of who the Father is? Maybe some of you, you've been going to church for many years and you still don't know the Father. It's time to bring that into focus right now. Do you see what the Father is doing? As Christians, we have a general call. We have to fulfill the Great, the great Commission. We need, to, we need to preach the gospel, and we need to, yes, many of us know that. We need to be witnesses of him. But how does that fit in the context of where you are right now? The nitty-gritty. What is the kingdom of God specifically for you and in the context of where you are and with your talents. Something to think about. While we are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must continuously be salt and light in the midst of a, a dark and broken world. Right now, we are in a place where the wheat and the tares must grow together. While we are seeking first the kingdom of God, let's still remember we are still called to engage in life and culture. You can't divorce yourself of culture. You can't divorce yourself of life. It doesn't mean that we allow the spirit of the culture to infiltrate us, but we are still engaged in it. Because why? God has still called us to be salt and light. You can't be light if there's no darkness. You can't be salt if you're not in a place that needs it. A lot of times we simply see the world as evil and therefore we abandon our responsibilities while the world advances and now, is adv and now here's the problem. The world has advanced into the church. If the church just looks for the rapture, darkness continues to advance because we have to remember, we are the standard. The church is a standard for life and righteousness. The word of God is of course the ultimate standard, but the word needs to be manifested through us. Thus, setting the standard. You know, Jesus is coming back for the bride, which is his church. But he's not coming back for a dead, broken, emaciated bride. He's coming back for a victorious bride, washed in the blood of the Lamb today. Not a bride, not a, not a bride who's been beaten up by the world, the flesh, and the devil. And just to re reiterate the words of Jesus. If you lose your saltiness, what do you become good for? You just become good to be trampled under the feet of men. And we are at the time when the righteous become more righteous and the wicked become more wicked. But are you still engaging in business till he comes? Are you still carrying out the father's business? If you have a business, are you still doing and engaging in your business? 
If you're an employee, are you still working faithfully at your job? Are you still setting the standard for God's plans and purposes? Are you still setting the standard of excellence wherever you are? Because that's if God has called you in that place, you are to set that standard in the name of Jesus. Are you fulfilling your purpose here on the earth? Or are you merely just looking for a rapture? Remember, the rapture is also the place where God holds his people accountable. Yeah, you're going to be raptured, but then, you know, just like the, just like the guy with the ten minas and the five minas, God's saying, what did you do with the talents that I gave you? The rise of evil in our world and in our society is not an excuse to quit from doing good. We shine our light in the midst of the tears. We shine our light in the midst of the darkness. We become wheat in the midst of tears. We engage in the Father's business, even though we are in a very broken and dark world. When you see wickedness around you, does a righteous desire spring up within your heart? If we are part of the kingdom of God, his kingdom, last time I read, is still advancing. His kingdom does not retreat. God is the God of victory. He advances. God is not going to be outdone. But how is his kingdom expressed? It's expressed through his people. Doing the kingdom business. And it's not just about sharing the gospel. It's about living the expression of his kingdom in your day-to-day -day life. Yes, we must share the gospel. Yes, witnessing is important. But let me tell you something. Living it out is even better. So let me ask you, for you to advance the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God needs to be advanced in you. Is it bearing fruit in your life? Are you growing in your faith? Are you doing the Father's business in your devotional life? Hmm, pretty profound. If you're not, if the kingdom of God is not advancing in you, you cannot advance the kingdom of God. That's just the way it works. So let me ask you, how is the next few years going to play out for you? Are you going to just continue doing the same old thing and expecting a different result? Are you producing the spiritual fruit that God has called you to produce at this time in your life? Let me ask you, and I, and I don't want to sound morbid here, but if it were all to end today, do you have something to show the Lord when he calls you to account? Have you been productive in the place where God has called you? Now, my day job, I'm a Samsung tech support agent. You know what? I try not to be late for work. I try to, I try to be as attentive as I can. I try to engage the best I can, but this is where God has called me for now, and I'm to do and be the best representative he has in that place as possible. So engage in business till he comes. Let your spiritual walk have a practical impact. Let your gifts start to bear interest. Advance in your gifting. Advance in your calling. Thus, giving the Father interest on his investment when he calls you to account. Advance the purposes and the agenda of God, wherever you may be. Whether it's in the political arena, advance the agenda of God there. Whether it's in your family, advance the agenda of God there. Whether it's amongst your friends and your peers and your social group, advance the kingdom of God in that place. And when you read that parable back in Luke that I just shared with you, this was also engaging the believer as well as the unbeliever. And some of you may say, well, what, what is the will of God? I, I can't figure it out. I'm just, I, I'm struggling to understand where God is, God is leading me, God is calling me. Let me tell you something. This is a very common but good rule of thumb. Do the known will of God and the unknown becomes known. What does that mean? The things that God has called you, the simple things that God has called you to do. You know, be a good employee. Be a good husband. Be a good wife. Be, if, if you're in the ministry, try to do the ministry wholeheartedly as best as you can. Whatever God has called you at this juncture of your life, 
Do it faithfully. Do it wholeheartedly. And do it with all of your being today. Because by doing that, you advance the kingdom of God. And you're giving the Lord interest for his return. Amen? So God wants you to bless you today. And God has planted seeds and giftings in your heart. I'm praying that those seeds, those giftings start to grow, that you would have something to present before the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. Be blessed today. And I'm just going to pray for you. So dear Heavenly Father, I pray you'll bless those who are in earshot of these words, Lord, that you'll bless them, you'll cause your faith, grace, and your purpose, and your glory to multiply in their lives. And Lord, that they might bear fruit, fruit that lasts. And Lord, fruit that that they can present before you at your return. Bless them. Bless your people tonight. Be with them. Cause your face of glory to shine upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed today. Amen.